The next time you feel like complaining about your neighborhood, remember that some folks live inside a volcano crater. You can see their village on Google Maps when you look at the most beautiful island of Madagascar. There's an almost perfectly round dark spot on the map. Roads are running on both sides of it, but don't cross it. When you zoom in enough, you'll see a village with houses sitting in the middle of a crater. The nearest marked town is five miles away from it. You could think it's some tribe that's lived there for centuries and wouldn't move no matter what. But as you look at the maps from previous years, you can see it's not shrinking, but growing. The first houses appeared here in 2008. So, why would someone living in the 21st century willingly relocate to such a well-hidden and isolated location? This question was bothering the team of Vox, an American news website. They decided to solve the mystery hmm. with zero data available on the unusual village. The first logical step was to find someone local and just ask them about what was going on behind the crater walls. It was tricky from the start, as some places marked on Google around the area turned out to be fake and inspired by manga. The real places didn't have any contact information. Then, they reached out to an organization that had some pictures on Instagram posted from the nearest town. They responded, but it didn't help at all as they had never been near the mountain in question. So, the journalists decided to try and reach out to experts in agriculture and biogeography work who might have connections in the region. It was obvious at that point that a simple Google search or a couple of messages wouldn't help. So, they decided to ask someone based in Madagascar to go and see the place. The mystery chasers got in touch with the head of a local video production company. She was surprised that someone would live in that area because of earthquakes, but agreed to get a crew and travel around 85 miles from the capital of Madagascar to the village. They set the expedition date for January, in the middle of the rainy season. The closer they got to the location, the worse the roads became. At some point, they had to change from the car to motorbikes and finally walk to their destination for an hour. A storm interrupted their plans, they had to go back before it would become impossible to pass on the slippery terrain. For safety reasons, they decided to postpone their expedition until the end of the rainy season in May. In the four months between the two expeditions, the Vox team decided to learn more about the mysterious location. It turned out that the mountain dated back to the Cretaceous period, and it was volcanic. An expert explained that the mountain we see today must be 90 million years old, older than Mount Everest and the Grand Canyon. So, the volcano that was sitting here was long extinct. The massive surrounding the crater is a huge alkaline ring complex. It was once a thriving village because of its elevated position and access to fresh water. The soil here is really fertile thanks to the alkaline chemicals in it. As the rainy season was over, the local crew was ready for another attempt to solve the mystery of the village inside the crater. This time, the weather and the roads were perfect, but there was a new problem. As they reached the village, the locals weren't too thrilled to see them. Finally, the leader of the Big Island Village, that's how its name translates, agreed to show them around. It turned out there were about 50 houses in the village and 300 people all belonging to the Betsilio ethnic group. When their hometown became overcrowded, they knew it was time to look for a new home. One of the village elders knew this could be the new location. He traded cattle in the area and remembered this wide open, empty space. So they traveled around 240 miles from their old home to their new crater village. They grow cash crops, mostly lemons and oranges, and sell them at the markets in neighboring cities. Transporting goods is challenging because the roads leading to and around the village aren't in the best condition. The volcanic mountain witnessed the separation of Madagascar from India around 88 million years ago. Ever since the island has been isolated from the rest of the world and the result of this loneliness is a unique flora and fauna. There are 40 species of lemurs you won't find anywhere else on Earth. All hail King Julian, if you know what I mean. Plus, there are about 800 species of butterflies. 92% of Madagascar's mammals, 89% of its plant life, and 95% of its reptiles can only be found here. 
So if you want to meet creatures like the giraffe weevil, the panther chameleon, the tomato frog, the adorable predator fossa, cute lemurs like the sifaka or the indri, and many other cool animals, you have to travel here. Scientists have three major theories on how the beautiful diversity of land animals made it to the island. First up, some species might have been chilling on Madagascar before it even became an island. Second theory, they swam or rafted their way from mainland Africa when the currents were feeling generous. Lastly, there's the land bridge idea. The problem is that there is hardly any fossil record in Madagascar between the time of the dinosaurs and about 2,000 years ago. In a new study, researchers compared the genes of modern-day Madagascar species with their mainland African relatives, trying to figure out when each animal's ancestors hitched a ride to the island. It turned out that some species in Madagascar have been there for over 80 million years and have seen the island split from the Indian subcontinent. It means that creatures like the big-headed turtle survived the dinosaur extinction event 66 million years ago. But most of the reptiles, mammals, and amphibians opted for a more adventurous journey. They descended from smaller animals that likely rafted their way to Madagascar. Lemurs, for example, probably had tiny ancestors, like the mouse lemurs. Tortoises might have just floated across the Mozambique Channel without needing a raft to get to their destination. The first humans settled here just around 1,300 years ago. The island's name is still a bit of a linguistic mystery. Legend has it that Marco Polo, the famous Venetian merchant, gave it the name after getting his geography a bit mixed up. He confused it with the kingdom of Mogadishu in East Africa, did some mispronunciation, and voila, Madagascar was born. Despite the uncertainty in its name's origin, language and culture point straight to Indonesia. Some scholars argue that the first settlers came here straight from Indonesia, with African influences sprinkled in later through migration. Others think it was a mix of several voyages along the coasts of India, the Arabian Peninsula, and Africa, creating a diverse melting pot. Most people on the island speak Malagasy, the national language, which was based on the Latin alphabet. French is also widely spoken and is officially recognized. If you're using vanilla on a regular basis, chances are that it comes from Madagascar. The island supplies around 80% of the world's natural vanilla, and it makes 25% of the country's exports. They also sell clothing and textiles, cloves, fish, and shellfish, and various food products overseas. They use most of the land to let their cattle wander and enjoy the juicy green grass. Some of the oldest villages used to be built on hilltops surrounded by huge ditches for defense. But later, they've been rebuilt on lower grounds. It's more handy to do agriculture down there. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.